The barber's chair was a staple in Papaw's service station uh, pretty much as long as I can remember. People in the community would come to have their cars fixed or serviced and they would just stay around for the conversation. The chair sat there in the waiting room, as far as I know, since the service station was opened. I remember sitting in the barber's chair watching Papa work on cars, and then when my wife and I were dating, she would sit in the barber's chair and do her homework while I was working on cars. After we got married, the barber's chair ended up at my great aunt's house. Of course, my wife knew how much the chair meant to me growing up, so she talked with Aunt June about uh, buying the chair. Well, my Aunt June uh, figured out what we were gonna do with the chair after they talked for a little while, and she just gave it to us. I'm, I'm extremely grateful to have this piece of history from my Papaw service station sitting in my garage today. My Papaw was a very well-respected man in the community, even though he was just a mechanic. He actually served as the uh, Justice of the Peace and did quite a few other political things uh, in the town of Oliver Springs. His service station was just a little two-bay garage with an in-ground post lift and a very small waiting room with, of course, the barber's chair sitting in it. He worked there 12 hours a day, six days a week. Uh, it doesn't, didn't matter if it was a holiday or, or, or he didn't take long weekends or vacations very often. He just, he just worked and worked and worked and he really instilled that sense of, uh, of hard work and that work ethic in me. I remember uh, him changing oil and checking oil and uh, he taught me how to check oil. I, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I, he, I would see him pull the oil dipstick out and wipe it off and check it again. And I did that. I didn't really know what I was looking at, but I did it and I pumped a lot of gas and that was, uh, that's really where I got my start. When Papa retired, he actually built a bigger, better shop at his house than he ever worked in while he was running the service station. Uh, he installed a, a nice two post lift and brought all of his equipment home from the service station, including a tire changer and uh, of course all his hand tools and a big steel workbench. And that's where, I, that's where I really started getting my hands dirty working on cars. I, I pumped gas and checked oil at the service station, but I really started learning about cars in that shop. Papal really taught me a lot about how to work on cars, how they worked, and how to use tools. And he taught me a lot of stuff that you really only learn from, from the old school guys. He helped me pull the Falcon out of the garage and get it back on the road. Uh, there's a blog post about that. I'll put in a link in the description for that. If it weren't for Papaw, that Falcon probably never would have ended up in my hands. Um, we spent a lot of time on it, rebuilding the brakes and changing the spark plugs and wires, changing all the fluids, and we did maintenance on it periodically. And it was really the last big project that we worked on together. That's a huge reason why the Falcon will always be part of our family, and it's just not something we'll ever sell. Papaw's service station was called Rabian Sun Service Station, but to all of us it was just the station. When my wife and I were talking about starting this blog, we were kicking around a bunch of ideas and names and things like that, and she just kind of sat back and said, what about the service station after your Papaw? We just looked at each other and we decided that was the one, that was it, that, that's the one we were going to go with. Really, that's what this series is, is going to be all about. Honoring the men and women who gave us our start in the car world and really inspired our love of cars. The Barber's Chair is all about telling their stories. 